All right, what's up guys? Today I'll be going over all the buffs and debuffs in Destiny 2 currently, which is a lot. I'll be breaking down the percent that they buff your weapon or buff your damage by, how long they last, and also how they stack with each other, what stacks with what, what doesn't stack together, and also briefly show off the highest stack possible in the game. So I'm going to be talking about things like gun perks, as you see right there, then also buffs in the game, which are things like Well Radiance, Empire and Rift, and things like that. Then also the debuffs in the game, which are things like Tractor Cannon, as you see right here. So this video is going to be pretty long, and I'm going to try to take my time, make sure I do everything in full detail, and all that good stuff. So if you need to pause, rewind stuff, feel free to do that. But let's go ahead and get started first with gun perks. The first perk we're going to be looking at is going to be Rampage, and I'm going to be using the Midnight Coup to show off this perk. And Rampage is when you get a kill, it gives you increase of damage, and it stacks up to three times. So there's going to be three numbers we have to test here. First, without Rampage, that was the number I hit. Now with times one, I hit 35, 48. Times two, 41, 84. And times three, I hit 49, 12. So breaking down those numbers, times one was 20%, times two is 41%, and times three was 65.7%. So it's actually one of the highest single buffs in the entire game with times three Rampage. Now, how long does it last? It's only lasts roughly 3.5 seconds as you see here, and that's when the perk disappears. Now moving on to the next perk, which is Zombie Kill Clip. After getting a kill and reloading, it will grant you increased damage for a short period of time. So we're gonna go ahead and test that out. Without Kill Clip, I hit 801, as you see right there. Now with Kill Clip, after I get the kill and reload, I now hit 1224, which is 52.8% on the dot. So Kill Clip is a little bit above 50%. And I don't know if that's just on this AR, but just generally around 50% is kill clip. Now, how long does it last? So get the kill and reload. And it's last roughly, I believe, let's see here, 5 seconds on the dot. So kill clip lasts a little bit longer than Rampage. Moving on to the next perk is on B Headseeker, where body shots land with this weapon increase precision damage for a short period of time. So this one's kind of weird. I'm going to try to break it down for you guys. So without Headseeker, I hit 867. Now with Headseeker, what you have to do is almost like hit the body and then flick upwards. And as you see, I hit 9, 4, 5, which is 9% more damage with Headseeker. But you have to like literally go out of your way to hit a body shot and flick up and have like one of the bullets of the burst hit a body and then the next one hit headshot. So it's something like worth using. Next up is going to be High Impact Reserves, which is rounds at the end of the magazine deal more damage. So the first bullet, as you see right here, hits 1044. So I'm going to speed this up so you can see like the uh, progression of how much more damage it does over time. If you want to slow it down and actually see for yourself what's actually going on, you can. But I'm going to slow it down for the last bullet to show you what the buff ends up being. And the last bullet hits 1312. So breaking that down real quick, high impact, the final bullet of the round hits 25.7% more damage than the first shot, and it slowly ramps up to that number over time, starting roughly halfway through the mag. Next perk is going to be the Kellos SMG perk, Disruption Break, which is when you break a shield, it gives you more kinetic precision damage for a short period of time. So when I break this wizard's shield without the EP SMG, and as you see, I hit 658. Now doing the same thing, but breaking the shield with the SMG this time, now hitting a headshot, I hit 987 as you see right there. So the EP SMG buff is a 50% buff to kinetic precision damage for a short period of time. And let's find out how long that is right here. So once again, break down the shield. I'm going to go ahead and shoot and try to find when it stops working. And it lasts for roughly 5.6-ish seconds, so right around that 5-6 to six second mark. Up next is box breathing, which was nerfed in update 2.0. So I'm going to break down what box breathing does now on the Akelis sniper rifle. So first, without the perk proc, I'm going to hit 2659. Then go ahead and scope in and let it proc. And see what I hit now. Now I hit 3471, which is 30.5% for box breathing. Before update 2.0, it was more like 71.4%. So it got a kind of a huge nerf in terms of damage per shot. Then also, let's see how long it takes to proc. From scoping, it takes 1.5 seconds. Then once I shoot, it now gets rid of the perk. So you can only use it on the first shot of the mag, and then you have to wait if you want to use it again. Now moving on to Whispered Breathing, which is only on Whisper of the Worm. It is the masterwork for Whisper of the Worm that you get from doing like the three weeks or whatever. But it is different than Box Breathing, so let's see what it does. The regular damage was 5224 without the perk. Now proccing the perk and shooting again, I now hit 8439, 
which is now 61.5% for whispered breathing, which is a lot, lot more than the regular box breathing. So this perk is a much better version of it. And there's a few other differences. Whispered breathing takes a little bit longer to proc at two seconds. Then once I shoot with whispered breathing, it does not take the perk away. So until I unscope or reload or something like that, I will have the perk forever. So this version of box breathing is much better. Moving on to the final gun number then breakdown is Trench Barrel on Nikella's Shotgun. It's the only place in the game where you can find Trench Barrel, where when you get a melee hit, it buffs your weapon damage for a short period of time. So go ahead and check that out. Without the perk proc, I hit 2523. Now getting a melee for Trench Barrel, I now hit 3783. So Trench Barrel is a 50% buff, which is one of the highest buffs you can get on a gun besides Kill Clip and Rampage, then Whisper Breathing. So it's up there and it's very easy to do. And as you see, it actually lasts for five seconds, even though the buff on the side says four seconds, zero counts as a full second in this game. So it's actually five seconds. Now, one thing I want to throw in very quickly is the strike modifiers that you can put on to um, Knife walls and also just strikes in the game. They haven't changed, but I'm gonna go ahead and break them down again. So you have singes, one of each element, and you also have heavyweight as you see right here. Then there's two other perks, Grenadier and Brawler, which I'm not gonna show off in this video because I'm mostly looking at gun damage. So we have heavyweight and a singe. So I'm gonna go ahead and break those down really quick. Without either, I hit 10655 five with the Whisper of the Worm. Now with just Solar Singe on, and that's it, I hit 13319. Now with just heavyweight and no singe, I hit 21, 310. So the singe is 25% and then heavyweight is a full 100%, which is a 2x buff. So you can actually get some pretty high buffs just from the strikes alone. Now moving on to all the buffs in the game. If you don't know what a buff is compared to a debuff, a buff is something that increases your damage versus every target you shoot. For example, in Pine Rift, if you stay in the Pine Rift, then shoot other enemies, doesn't matter which enemy, you will get that buff damage for X amount of time. Also, for example, all the gun perks are broke down before. All those perks give you the damage buff for X amount of time on any enemy you shoot at. Another thing to mention is all buffs can stack with each other. So let's go ahead and begin. First, for this part of the video, I'm going to be using this scout rifle for every clip. So we're going to go ahead and check out the base damage of the scout rifle with no buffs. So we have that as a starting point. It's 403 with no buffs. So with the first buff we're going to look at is the Empire Rift, which we all know. So I'm going to go ahead and place the rift, shoot the ogre, and now I hit 503. So Empire Rift is a 25% buff that lasts for 15 seconds, as you see on the left side of my screen when I place it, which is a pretty good buff and very easy to use. Next one up is going to be Guiding Flame, which is the new melee on the Dawnblade. When you strike an enemy, it applies a burn damage and also empowers yourself and nearby allies, which is very good. So go ahead and test that now. So go ahead and get the melee and shoot at him again. And I hit 503, so the same 25% buff is the same for Guiding Flame as it was for Empowering Rift. Alright, moving on to the final buff from Dawnblade is the Well of Radiance, which is the super, where you throw your sword into the ground and creates this big aura around you, so go ahead and do that. Now shoot at the ogre, and now I hit 543, which is higher, it's a 35% buff compared to the two previous 25% buffs, so the super is a little bit higher and definitely worth using. Now I know I said all the buffs in the game stack, but this is one exception to the rule. Between all three of those buffs I just mentioned on Dawnblade, only two of them stack, which are Guiding Flame, then also Well of Radiance, and Pine Rift do not work with the other two. So out of all three of these, the only two you can use at the same time is Well of Radiance and Guiding Flame, and that's the end of the story, and that's the only combo that works. So as you see, put down my super, go grab the melee, and go ahead and shoot at him again, and now I hit 679, which is a higher percent than the previous clips, so they're clearly stacking. Moving on over to Titan with Inertia Override on the new Striker subclass. Sliding through ammo box will give you increased damage for a short period of time. As you see, slid through the primary box and then hit 483, which is 20% buff, which isn't bad, but it's kind of like you have to go out of your way to slide through a box to do this. And as you see in a second, I'm going to show you how long it lasts. So it's not really something that's really that useful. And as you see right here, testing how long it lasts, it lasts for 4 seconds, which isn't terrible, I guess. Alright, up next we have Banner Shield, which is the new Weapons of Light in this game, where you hold the shield, then everyone behind you on your team then gets Weapons of Light. So as you see, pop the shield, I'm gonna go ahead and stand behind them and shoot, and now I hit 503 as you see. So Banner Shield is also a 25% buff, which isn't bad, 
but isn't great because you take yourself out of the equation and you can't be doing damage yourself if you're holding the shield. So that's all the buffs in the game. Now we're going to move on to the last few debuffs in the game, which if you don't know what a debuff is, it is when you apply an ability to an enemy, which then weakens that enemy to any source of damage for X amount of time and only that enemy. So for example, when you melting point a boss, that boss is then weakened to incoming damage from everyone and only that boss. It's not everything. So the difference between a buff and a debuff is a buff increases your damage to all sources and then you shoot and a debuff is when one single enemy is weakened to all sources of damage. Unlike all the buffs in this game, debuffs do not stack so you can only use one at a time. So let's go ahead and start breaking them down. So first one up is going to be Tether which is called Shadow Shot in this game but everyone just calls it Tether. It's when you fire a little bow and arrow and it grabs enemies and then applies the debuff to them so go ahead and shooting this ogre with it then hitting a the headshot right there i hit 543 which is 35 percent so tether is a debuff that is 35 percent which isn't bad and it's really meant for groups of ads not a single target up next we have shattering strike is after performing a flawless execution your melee gives increased damage and a flawless execution is while crouch precision kills grant invisibility and true sight so as you see crouch get a headshot then I can then go melee this guy, which then applies like a melting point like effect. And as you see, I now hit 604, which is a 50% buff. So Shattering Strike is like a new and improved melting point, which will be broken down right after this. And now let's test how long it actually lasts and all that good stuff. So after I apply the melee, as you see, he has like this little, little like void effect around him, which lasts for six seconds on the dot. Then one thing to note about this is you can apply it multiple times as long as your flawless execution is up. So I can melee him, wait like 4 seconds, melee it again to reapply the buff, and then wait like another 4 seconds and apply it again. And I can then have the buff for almost a full 14 seconds doing it this way, which is very good. As mentioned before, next up is going to be Melting Point, which is called Hammer Strike, but everyone calls it Melting Point because that's what it was in D1. It's after you sprint for an extended amount of time, you then can like shoulder charge into your enemy, which applies the melting point. As you see right here, and go ahead and shoot at him, and I'm going to hit that 604 number again, which is 50% more damage. And melting point's been in the game forever, even in D1, so I think we all know what that is. But we're going to go ahead and test how long it lasts, so doing it again. Now this time it's like a solar effect around them, just like the void effect on Shattering Strike. And as we see, it lasts for roughly 6 seconds also, so Melting Point and Shattering Strike are very similar. Moving on to the final debuff in the game, which is Tractor Cannon, where when you shoot an enemy with his weapon, it then uh, weakens them to void damage, and then also all damage in general, but mostly void damage. So with his void bow, I hit 14, 13. Now I'm going to go ahead and Tractor Cannon him, shoot him again, and now hit 21, 19. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but with an uh, off-burn weapon, in this case Kinetic. As you see, I hit 536 with the scout rifle I've been using all along. So void damage is buffed by 50% with Tractor Cannon, then all other types of damage, including Kinetic, is buffed by 33%. So not bad. But how long does it last? Let's see. Tractor Cannon lasts actually a very, very, very long time. As you see, I'm shooting him with the scout rifle and just keep on getting the buff, keep getting the buff, have to reload, keep getting the buff, keep getting the buff. And it finally falls off around 11 seconds, so Tractor Cannon lasts forever. As mentioned at the beginning of this segment about debuffs, none of them stack, so I'm going to go ahead and show off a few things, and actually how some of them override each other. So first with Melting Point and Tractor Cannon, as you see I hit 536, which is the 33% number, so Tractor Cannon overrides Melting Point and Shattering Strike. Now with Melting Point and Tether, as you see shooting them now, I hit 543, which is that 35% number, so Tether overrides Melting Point and Shattering Strike also. And that leaves the last two things to test right here, which is Melting Point and Shattering Strike at the same time. And they're both 50% buffs that last for 6 seconds. And as you see, I hit 604 right there, which is 50%. So only one of them's working. I don't know which because they work the same way. But the thing to take away from this is don't use two debuffs at the same time because A, they don't stack. Then B, you might end up overriding the higher buff on accident, which you don't want to do. So make sure to only apply one at a time. So now let's move on to how buffs and debuffs stack and all the math behind it and show you how to calculate your own buffs and strikes and things like that. So first, if you have two 50% buffs and stack them on top of each other, it does not equal 100%, it equals 125 because you multiply the two buffs together. Showing this off in gameplay form, as you see with this EP shotgun, without any buffs, I hit 25, 23. 
Nominal proc, melting point, and trench bar at the same time, which are both 50%. And you'll see the resulting damage. As you see, I now hit 5675. So if you take the base damage 2523 and multiply it by 125%, you then get the 5675 number I hit, so that's how buffs work in this game. So then we ask, what is the highest buff stack possible that you can get in the entire game currently? So, it would look something like this. You would have one person put down Well Radiance, then that same person would then grab a Guiding Flame melee, then another person would be holding Banner Shield, as you see right here, then another person would be going in for Melting Point or Shattering Strike 1 to 2 because they're both 50% debuffs, and they both last for 6 seconds, so you can choose between those two. Then the person shooting would slide through a power ammo brick with Whisper of the Worm while proccing Whisper Breathing, as you see right here. And then on top of all that, you'd be in a Nightfall with Heavyweight and Singe. So there's a lot going on, but wait, that requires 4 people in a Nightfall, which, is that even possible? Well yeah, you could be in a fire team of 3 and match someone in patrol, which when you're in patrol inside the Nightfall, you still have the burn and Heavyweight, so you could technically do it there. But am I going to do that in this video? Mm, probably not, that's a lot going on. But for fun, let's break down what that buff would look like. So here's all the buffs up on screen and their percents right now. There is 8 of them, which is a lot. And let's do the math and see what the actual end result would be. It'd be 1,433% buff or 15.33x damage, which is a lot. So what can you actually do with 3 people? First, with no buffs, I hit 26504. Now, I'm going to place my Well Radiance, grab a melee, while one of my teammates goes in for melting point, while one of my other teammates uses Banner Shield, and do all that. So here's all those buffs on the screen right now, which is the same as before without Inertia Override, which ends up being a 12.774x buff, which means I should be hitting 338,586. So run it back, and this time let's actually shoot at him. Place my Well, get my melee, he MPs, Banner Shield's up. Shoot, doesn't hit for some reason, shoot again, and 338,714. I was off by like 100, but there you go. That's the highest buff you can get in the game with three people in a Nightfall. One last thing I want to touch on in this video is when to use Banner Shield or not. So, since it's only a 25% buff, and you take away yourself from doing damage, when you're in fire team of three, if you buff your two teammates by 25%, but remove yourself from doing damage yourself, that is not optimal, but in something like a raid with 6 people where you're buffing 5 other people by 25%, so you're buffing your team in total by 125%, just by taking 25 times 5, then you remove yourself, which is 100%, because you're removing one full person. In that scenario, that is optimal, because you'll end up doing 25% more damage overall in that scenario. So realistically, in a strike, all you want to do is place a well, get a guiding flame melee then also melting point and those are like the only three buffs you really need in a three person activity to be optimal in a raid you want to do everything i just said plus the banner shield with six people and that is the most optimal way of doing damage in a raid anyways i think that is all for the video i know it's very long a lot of stuff going on if you guys have any comments or questions or anything like that be sure to let me know and i'll try to reply to as many as i can and answer all the questions I can also. Anyways, thanks for watching. Go melt some bosses. Catch you guys next time.